back to the Sideline Eye podcast. We're in Cross McGlen here, only after witnessing Clan Gale overcoming Drummond T. I'm joined by Philly McAvoy, and we're going to go through the day's game and last night's as well. Ballon McNabb's win over Sarsfields, and we have an interview with Rory Grugan coming up. He spoke to Kieran Lynch after the game. So, Philly, I suppose this game's fresh in our mind. We'll, we'll go through it first. Um, Drummond T's out of the championship, and Clan Gale go on five point winners. Uh, not shell. Don't think there's a lot more to report on, Sean, if I'm being honest. The, the way it panned out, like 3 2 at half time, probably tells his own story of the first half. From a drum and tea perspective, last week, <coughs> excuse me, we changed, well, drum and tea changed it up in terms of the way they approached the game. The first two matches, on the back of their very impressive 1B performances, like they attacked the game more in the first couple of games, but against the kind of quality of the opposition of the 1 A team, the not Kears and Cleavy and Bally McNabb, like they got down a little bit, certainly defensively. Injuries mounted up, which didn't help as well. So, getting into last week against Mahari, there was a change of approach, very much more defensive. You had Stephen Cusack on during the week, and he spoke about you know, how Mahari felt about facing that. They certainly weren't expecting a total change of the f- approach from the, the drum and tee management and team or whatever. So, they struggled somewhat, and Stephen's own admission last week to deal with that. And we coming here today, we expected them to continue with that defensive approach or whatever, which stood them so well last week. I suppose coming into the game, the big issue for Drummond T was where was the scores coming from? Barra asked me the first question on commentary and I was dreading it because they didn't have an answer <laughs> and yet he fired my way first time out and you know a bit of that is down to the injuries up front to Legend Kenna was always a go-to man for us in terms of focal, focal point up in the full forward line. He was a big miss for us I mean, he was carrying an injury even into the championship and stuff like that like so his championship campaign never really got started before it was finished and yeah at times we've seen a lack of quality really like um, up top and that's probably been I suppose overemphasised by the quality we faced yeah. from the forwards we faced be it Kieran O'Hanlon on the first day in Cleavy Jack Grugan against Bally McNabb today the glimpses we've seen of McPartland and Supi we all know what he's about like, but Supi didn't have his best day either like, but still has a threat like, and it draws people towards him and frees up other players and everything else so averaging 9 points a game in championship football isn't going to get you where you want to be Today they conceded just a one seven on from clans who were averaging like maybe three thirteen or something across the three games. Like so, the way they took that at the start of the game, saying that that's manageable, we'll try and work our way into it. And probably had their chances. That's the the you know, frustrating part from a drama heat perspective. There was a spell there where they were two points down. The, the penalty itself, I haven't seen it back, but you know it's the referee give it. So no arguments here. That got them into a five point lead or whatever else. Like that was a massive a massive kind of score in a game like this considering the, the low amount of scores there was throughout but Trump he had their chances yeah. after that like it ended up being 5 points or whatever but they got it back down to 2 or 3 yet missed 2 or 3 points as well like and a, or 2 or 3 scoring chances pretty bad ways as well like some 1 blocked as well 3 in the, per- in the first half into the keeper's hands those type of things can't be happening in championship football they paid the price at the end of the day from a Clan Gale perspective like could hear just when we were starting the cheers from the dressing room, I'm sure it's from the dressing room, nowhere else. And what a place to be in for them, especially the young minor lads who played there what, just over 48 hours of the, uh, ahead of the minor championship playing on Monday night. Like, they're listen, I'm not going to folklore beating drum and tee 175 where they ended up, but it's a win along the road to get them into the quarter final of the championship. They're unbeaten in the senior championship and in the minor championship final to look forward to on Monday. So that took a lot off the tongue there because they're, they're achieving a lot at the minute. And listen, Drum and T came up against them in the semi final. Uh, the Drum and T miners and were waxing there about the quality of the likes of Callum Neal and stuff like that. Like, and you can see his class at times. And that's that kind of was a deciding factor here today as well in terms of the penalty, albeit some might say it was a bit soft, the decision itself, but the period of play that preceded it was lovely. Like, lovely yeah. ball in, beautiful pass in. Callum Neal later on and run down the wing, a beautiful pass in as well for uh, yeah, this allowed goal that time as well. Those type of quality passes of play, Drummond he just couldn't muster because of lack of bodies and everything else. But also that bit of quality as well, you have to hold your hands up to the clan. The clans did bring to the table when it counted most. Um, so they'll be delighted with themselves. As I say, the minor lads will get a recovery done and go again Monday night um, from a clan's perspective. They're up again next week, I think it is, the quarterfinals, whatever the case may be. They're looking ahead and in a good place as a club overall and satisfied with the result today. Got the performance, got the victory, out the door.
what he said really about class respect with him now. Yeah, I think Clan McGill, obviously, but happy enough, you mentioned the goal was the big turning point. The, um, Shane McParney scored the penalty. He's, he's got a goal a game now, so while he didn't have his best day, he's still he's still racking up big scores. But I suppose, from Clan McGill's perspective, probably wasn't their best performance, but I know talking to his offer, um, facing that sort of defensive team, that German team, that defensive wall that they put up today, Clans probably haven't faced that yet in the championship, and they probably won't in the quarter final either. Whoever they come up against, but they pass that test, they're through to the quarter finals, and well, anything can happen now, really. Yeah, and they would say the class have passed that test playing colours, yeah. coming out with a five point victory, conceding five scores for this for this fixture. They were averaging around about two twelve. They were conceding <laughs> like so. Uh, that group there was kind of no swinging one way or another, and um, they showed great character against Mullivan and Sarchins and Cross. Obviously, they get the draw. But against Mullivan and Sarge means to claw the game back when they were six and eight points down respectively. Like that showed real character. That showed character right there today. Like coming pacing a defensive unit like Drummondy had put in front of them. Sometimes you can easily get frustrated and everything else. So everything can go awry because you start being sorry of yourself and all because you know you let the other team distract you. Clans did and Clans just sucked it up. Three two up at half time. They were happy enough. Like they're not here to entertain, like they're here to win matches like like most teams come champs at time. Like so yeah, they'd be happy, they'd be going out the door to the fence with a, with a clean sheet, which is probably their first one of, well, I think they actually had one against Cross. Cross, there, yeah. They had their five, like, conceding five points in the championship match. Like, yeah. You're going places if you're doing that. Like, you can say whatever, but from it, he's wastefulness up top. There was scores there to be had, but they will say they put the necessary pressure on to force the errors and everything else. And very few times in my whole career, I can, I can remember, only conceding five points in the championship match. So for the defence, all the plaudits, I suppose, before the game is all about part and going forward and everything else and you know defence was kind of like oh maybe they're a bit suspect and high ball issue and all and the full back line and everything else was mooted about the place but I didn't see any of that today I thought the full back of Cronin was top class a couple of real bursts through the middle he just put the clampers on straight away like. so overall yeah a real a real fillet I suppose for for clans as I say not one that they be talking about in history books in clans but you'd be surprised if you for that can do you a lot more good than kind of And I suppose, Philly, can, can Clans take out a big hitter here? Because I think every week on the podcast we're talking about them as maybe not top contenders, but somebody that can cause, they'll cause an upset maybe in the quarterfinal, they can beat a big team. That's where they are at the minute, isn't it? It seems that they're maybe not at the stage where they're going to win a senior championship yet. They're maybe a couple of years away, but they could definitely, they're going to cause trouble in that quarterfinal, whoever they get. That's it, like, and let's not just take it for granted, like, in terms of the, it's probably was three minor by boys here or um, had an appearance there today be it off the bench or started it's not a given that a minor who's you know probably above the kind of level the minor level is going to step into senior team and make you know make a difference yeah. but these guys are like, and that's testament to them it's testament to all the coaching them beforehand and everything else and to have that in your locker and to have their youthful exuberance I know from a drum and heat perspective um, we've got a very good under 16 team coming and there's a feeling around the senior team you know this is going to boost everything but that's down the lane there's no pressure on them lads and everything else that their time will come they have better things to focus on uh, at this stage but plans have that at minor level now so if you're a senior player like a super you don't just reach his 30s in his 30s whatever like if he sees them young lads coming through that's going to just propel him on to think I'm going to stay here for five six years and see where this team brings me like a super Supi would probably say, well, other people would probably say about Supi that you know, those times he's carried clans over the years or whatever, he must be sitting back thinking, I can't wait till these young lads come through. Bring that energy, not to just challenge the matches, but bring that ma- energy to training, to the club community around the place. Like, it's amazing what a team, a young team being successful can do for the older players in the group. Drummond here at the minute are probably lacking that. They probably have that wee gap now to this, you know, younger teams where there's good potential coming through, but in the next couple of years and that like you know it's hard for senior players when they don't see you know some minors coming on and making an impact but clans not have that issue now they're ha- actually have minors currently making an impact on the senior pitch and senior challenge football like which is amazing like, and that can only bode well for them going forward as i said like the look back and things today it was you know pretty drab for uh, occasions they'll not be happy with a lot of the stuff like uh, the managers will go through pick holes and different things and everything else but as I say, they got the victory. Those boys having another senior champs appearance in their belt. They'll be looking forward to the big guns now. They've already threw the cross. Yeah. Kind of champions. Yeah. So like, what more can they do apart from eke out a win there in the first game? Like, but since then, 
they've been impressive with their shooting and everything else. The even McPartland there, like Supi's off the penalties, like McPartland's on the penalties as well, which Supi was the go-to man any time I played against Clans for penalties. So that's the impact he's had yeah. in terms of the leadership and everything he's shown. A couple of things Barr I mentioned in commentary. The game was in the melting pot when he thought John McKee might he'd get another score to here to bring it back to one or two points. Like McPartland won a couple of high balls and burst forward, won a free done the simple things they got which showed a bit of leadership as did Callum O'Neill albeit yeah. an 18 year old yeah. like that. so what a place they're in at the minute <coughs> you know they we're looking to draw and you know we'll take on anyone like yeah. so there, there'll be no fear and like you mentioned that you know perhaps not winning senior championship and all like but them young lads get over the line beating cross in a minor championship thing on Monday night like yeah. them boys are thinking senior championship yeah. and senior championship win that's the way it goes that's what success brings like that winning mentality, like it doesn't matter what level you're winning at, you bring that into a different level, you still have that same mentality and you expect yourself to win. Like, and that's possibly, you know, if things go their way on the night, they could be coming on a whole wave of momentum into the quarterfinal season. Perhaps more momentum than any other team left in the competition. Well, Bally McNabber through to Philly, they won last night, um, three fifteen to six, I think. Uh, I think was the final score. So. Um, and a big score racked up by Valium Canal, but another good win for them. Yeah, 18 points by my calculations, which um, they like the 18 points that we <laughs> drum a key on, so you know, you're laughing at your 15 points, but then it'll see. Um, yeah, listen, I can't, probably haven't listened back to the commentary against Valium Canal, but I probably spoke um, like about Valium Canal's forward lane that much that, you know, it's just, it's sometimes you have to sit back. Cause even when I was looking at Super today, when I was training with Supi back with Armagh, like, I used to love training against him because you're training against the best. Yeah. And that's what Supi was like to me. 1v1, Handy taking on Supi was up there with Stevie and Jamie and everything else. But the Grugans have that as well. Like, mm. So was Gabby. So Gabby against us, against Drummer T in the whatever, the second round of pictures there. I wasn't really on it. And Jack done the business that day, whatever he got, certainly a couple of goals and everything. Last night, by all accounts, Jack had one of his quieter days or whatever. And Gabby steps up and hits the net twice. Like, that's what Brannick Nav have, like, that's the beauty of it, beauty of it, and that's what, not to go back to Drumby all the time, but that's what Drumby, you were missing there, yeah. but ruthlessness up top, like, and that's what Brannick Nav through, had through the two Grugans, Gabby, and also Hughes now in full forward, which was impressive against Drumby, he was the first time I came across him, I never really got a chance to play against him myself, but again, another impressive kind of outfit up front for Brannick McNabb. like, so, so I seems to be disappointed, like, they were in a group there where it was swinging, Know, one way and another, like they're probably looking back thinking they could have got a, a, po- a po- more positive result against Clans if he'd left that re- result behind or whatever. Done great against Mullaban and everything else to, to leave the championship on the back of an 18 point defeat. Yeah, he said when Brian McNabb beat Drummond, he the beauty of that was that Drummond he had a chance to redeem themselves the following Sunday, which they did, but sadly don't. And that's the real, that's the real sickener for them. Like it's very hard to go into the winter on the back of an 18 point championship defeat. Um, and to, you know, to get all that energy back, I'll be talking about all the energy flowing through clans and everything at the minute. Like suddenly in Sarge feelings, you know, it's, that's a tough, that's a tough pill to swallow or whatever. And despite up until that point, really doing themselves proud and giving a good uh, representation of themselves in the you know championship day. Up to that point, they'll not be happy with last night. Like, and I'm sure moving forward they'll get to still quality players and everything down in Sarge feelings and all. And probably no harder place in the county to go to the time also whatever. Like so, I'm not labour too much in that. Drummond, he had one of those days, so you know it's, it can happen. Teams, and you know, unfortunately, it happened to them when they don't have a chance to make it up or to kind of, you know, redeem themselves the following week, whatever. But that is where we're at at the minute in terms of football. It's do or die stuff. Like, and unfortunately, for Sarge's then they exit for Bandy McNabb. You know, they kind of. I heard from various sources that they kind of left the result behind them in Cleavy. A lot of time during the Cleavy match, they seem to be in control. We were keeping very close contact with regards to that result in Drummond he that day and Cleavy done us a favour and everything that day but Bally McNabb be disappointed they never took that top spot and will have to face one of the the number one guys then uh, the, one of the group winners in the next round but at the same time they'll not be fearing anyone like, and that's the beauty about the Armagh Championship really is that like, each team will feel as if they have no one to fear yeah. you know like also county champions and uh, have all the back all the history that you could ever wish for like but any team will feel that they will give Cross a game the same way Cross will feel they could beat anyone like it's wide open like and you know it's we do probably look at Cross and Clan Aaron as the top two 
themselves and Madden and Cantier here are the only ones who remain unbeaten or whatever so that'll hold in uh, in good stead or whatever going forward but yeah pick a winner from here like it's tough tough to decide and certainly after Mondays if the draw is maybe Sunday like Sunday I think Sunday. it is yeah so, yeah that'll be interesting to see the parents then next weekend uh, be something about water and taste you know, certainly in the back of even tomorrow's games and everything else like uh, for kind of nice watering kind of spectacle next weekend and it's becoming harder and harder to predict games like certainly a few surprises no more probably than drum tea last week against Mahri and um, not many give drum tea uh, any hope to dump Mahri at a championship but that's what happened and you know Mahri with the, the, the I suppose the the big players back and all have a good win against Kalibi like would have been coming up full of confidence like, like even Stephen mentioned in the, the podcast like but on the day anything can happen like, and that's what any team left in the championship should be rubbing the hands with uh, that on any given day they can beat anyone there's no outstanding team away ahead of everyone else it really is wide open and of course you've done with either they're not in anymore but anyone that's in it must be rubbing their hands thinking like you know to be at three four weeks down the line be probably somewhere special yeah it's, it's a lot of football to be played obviously but it's going to be an exciting time and um, we'll hear from Rory Grugan now he spoke to Kieran Lynch after Bally McNabb's win over Sarsfields and we'll concentrate on the two Sunday games as well after we hear from Rory uh, 18 point margin of victory, fairly emphatic in the end and how happy were you with what you are able to do tonight? Yeah, it's good, uh, a good win. Um, I suppose we're very disappointed with the way last weekend went. Uh, we had ourselves in a good position to win the game um, and Kalevi came back really strong and ended up pulling away from us. Like, and it was our aim to finish top of the group, it gives you that extra week, it's a straight to quarter final and you're avoiding the other group winners and stuff but we have to do it the hard way now so a good reaction tonight, a real strong start, built up a bit of a lead and I suppose from then on, Sarsfield's had a chase the game, we were able to pick them off, so good, good win in the end. Yeah, you, you've touched on it there already, but in terms of getting a reaction, how important was it? Obviously it was disappointing, but you've the quick turnaround, playing especially on the, on the Friday night as well. Yeah, I think that, that helps when it's a quick turnaround, when you have a disappointing performance, you don't have to stew on it and get too down about it. You've won really one proper training session on Tuesday night, and you get back at it. The draw happened Sunday night, so it focused the minds really quickly. We've played Sarsfield's a lot over the last few years, so we knew what we're coming up against. And we knew from the game last week they're going to play a really direct style of football, so that was going to present a new challenge. And with a couple of knocks and stuff, so we knew it was going to be uh, uh, tough that way. But we responded really well. To it. And of course, in terms of the scoring you're doing, I think that's now ten goals you've racked up already in the championship. And, and being part of that forward line, the serious strength and depth there, I suppose, because any number of those forwards can, can cause damage. And, and how crucial or, or how good is it to have that in your team? You know, it's important to have uh, sort of multiple threats, like because you know as you come up against the best teams, you're going to have really good top defenders. And you have to try and present threats all around the forward line, and it's something I suppose we've always been lucky with in the last few years to have, uh, you know, good quality forwards. There's, there's Jack and Gavin, and then the two users there as well. Ryan Waters chipping in, and boys coming from deep there, you know, with threats for goals and stuff. So, like any team now, the way it is, like everyone attacks together, defends together. So the more fires that opposition have put out, you know, the stronger it's going to be. You know, tonight, uh, like Jack started off strong, and then other boys stepped up. Other times, it's up to some of the huges whatever like you'll never probably have all firing at the same time but as long as there's two or three chipping in you know you'll hopefully get to your target score and at the other end obviously holding Sarsfields to six points I think in, in three of the four games you've played now you've kept the opposition to single digits and again that, that's one of your strengths okay, yeah it's a, it's a baseline for any team is to be well set up defensively like and nowadays teams defend the numbers try and make themselves hard to beat uh, and Sarsfields presented a really different threat tonight a bit more traditional a lot of long direct ball and the boys dealt really well with Dominic and Chris and, and Oshin and stuff just knocking balls away, fighting for breaks, uh, and I suppose you take pride in the fact that you were trying to keep a clean sheet with the duck. Yeah, and then finally, you've mentioned you have to do things the hard way now. It's going to be one of Madden, Clan Aaron across McGlenn, and you know, with all due respect, as far as it's going to be a, a tick up and challenge, but I suppose it's this time of year, isn't it? Do you have to beat these yeah, teams if you want to? to be honest, like once you get to a quarter, you know, you know, you're going to be playing the best teams, and if you're going to go where you want to go, you have to beat these teams. Um, like if you top the group, you would have avoided them for one more step, but like if you go to a semi or meeting some of these anyway, so... We'll see who comes out of the pot Sunday night. I assume there's no repeat parents. It can't be Kalevi, like you say. It's just one of the three. So any of them is going to be a massive step up for us. And we'll sort of gather ourselves this week, see who it is, and go from there. 
So Joe, uh, a good performance there from the Harps, a good win. I think it was six points um, between the teams at the end. Is there happy enough? Yeah, look, a good performance in, in parts. I um, suppose we wouldn't be happy with the last ten minutes um, of either half. We sort of leaked a lot of scores. So look, we're a bit of a team in transition at the minute. We have a lot of young players coming forward. So we're just enjoying being in the next round um, and being in the quarter final, just building every game. I suppose you, you mentioned them young boys, the likes of Luke McKeever, Oshin Hughes, um, Cahalig New, all had strong performances there today. Yeah, look, them boys are only 18, 19, and sometimes um, you, f- you forget how young they actually are. Like, you know, Big Tag and me there w- was running through, and you forget that these lads are only 18. You suppose you have a lot of expectation. So they put a big shift in today, and it's a good sign that them boys are pushing and they're keeping some of the older boys uh, on their toes. And you're through to the last eight now. That's obviously where you want to be. Knockout football now, Joel, today was knockout and it's going to be knockout from now on and this is real championship football I suppose yeah look we've played relatively well the last couple of years um, but been ultimately dumped out of the championship by Mahari both years in a row so look we're happy to just get a bit of a run and we'll see where, where it takes us yeah I suppose we're, we're speaking before the draw so we can't even talk about the next game but so we'll stay on this game I suppose getting through it um, you drew obviously last week as well with Madden the big the big thing um, in the group stages was obviously your defeat to Silverbridge but you've bounced back well if not the, the never say die attitude you showed last week against Madden and then coming here for a six point win yeah look we, we had a lot of sort of um, we had to come up with with an answer for, for the heavy defeat against Silverbridge and Silverbridge are a good side and you know we weren't on it then that day and they punished us severely and you know they could have maybe beat us by more to be honest on the night so look we got a performance last week against Madden um, again only played in parts 15-20 minutes so we're just trying to get a full half together or a, maybe a full game of 60 minutes of good football so look hopefully we're just building nicely and sure we'll see where it takes There's a lot of good teams left so we'll see what happens and see the draws good stuff Joe thanks for coming on cheers Sean Colm, um, we're just here in the quarter-final draw, but we'll, we'll concentrate on this game first. Um, a hectic game and probably the best, well, the second half definitely the best game of the championship. <laughs> yeah, um, look, it, we're thrilled to win, to be honest with you. The, um, it was a dogfight, and we haven't won any dogfights. Like, I mean, we were in, when we played Madden, it was, we couldn't hack the weather or what they threw at us and we bounced back very well the next two matches but it probably we knew straight away we weren't as bad as what, what we showed against Madden we weren't as good as them two of them here now we mix the good and the bad and what we're trying to do is get a little bit of consistency in, in, into our performance but all credit to um, Graham Moore like a really good so I got the championship final last year a lot of um, lot of know-how in their team and we probably we probably stunned them at the start uh, but they certainly um, responded and, and caused us huge problems but to come out the right end of it uh, for a young team like Silverbridge is, is massive and how, how big is that that it nearly felt like a loss for you because you did at the end of the game because you had let them back in it so much but to get through that column and obviously we know you have Clan Earn next probably the favourites for the championship along across McGlynn but how big is that for team morale for momentum for training the bouncing training and everything how big is coming through a game like that well look we're, we're, we're in September now we've got two more weeks training which is brilliant you want to be training at this time of year and you want to be looking forward to playing top teams like, like Clan Earn because that's only where you learn and, and see where you really are but as I said to you um, like th- it did feel like a defeat and I mentioned that to the fellas and saying look you don't win championships by beating teams by 9 and 10 points every match you have to scrap and fight for your life and win an odd match by one like what happened there is like I mean Silverbridge um, by great football in the first half and, we, and we're after now putting say how would you put it, two and a half matches of really solid performances together um, and the last half there was a scrap but we still had two goal chances there that we butchered and, and you know like so we could have put a kind of a bigger win on it I think we deserved it I think um, we fought but you know there's a thing in, in, in sport called survivor mode and we probably went into that a little bit too early in terms of dropping back trying to defend what we had instead of playing what we were doing all but that's very difficult it's very, very easy for me standing on the sideline to tell the boys you should be doing this doing that but I'm not feeling what they're feeling you know I'm, I'm only seeing it. they're under massive pressure right they're, they're, they're probably fatiguing they're probably tired and you know that's what playing at this level does Like, and the more you play at this level and the more you prepare you get better at that so that's where we're delighted to be still in the, the mix to get better at playing these teams to, to make better decisions when we're tired when we're under pressure you know so they're a good young team and, and like we're building hard we've got a good um, SNC coach and John McMahon we're, we're trying to get stronger our training age would be probably quite younger than the likes of Grain Moore and Cross McLean and Clan Air. but you know you have to start somewhere so we're, we're really delighted to still be in the mix with the big guns and that second half as a manager what can you do it's in the players hands isn't it it's very tough it 
this because um, momentum swings both ways and like they got a proper patch we were I'm just a little bit disappointed that the proper patch lasted that long you know but the boys worked shock and heart Pete Cara um, showed great leadership going back there to Mark um, Toner there uh, when he dropped in you know stuff like that so that's what you want you want a team thinking like that they don't they're not guided by the line they have to react to what they see and and again I keep saying that the more you're exposed to playing that level them decisions um, I have to question a few of the um, sort of the refereeing decisions in terms of like Jarlig or Oldbourne's got got a clear punch in the face like I mean I, I couldn't believe it myself um, there was an elbow thrown there was a lot of high tackles there was a lot of that sort of stuff that probably you know could have been punished but look it was an exciting game for people to watch and uh, and they won't be complaining about that like my, my, my job is to make sure that the players are safe and ready to train on Tuesday so I think we've got a clean bill of health we're looking for that and Clonner, now you have two weeks to prepare for that and as I say probably a lot of people's favourites for the championship yeah I think they won Division 1A so I mean like that that's a great form because that's a tough division to win we won 1B so it'll be we'll see now is there uh, much of a difference we know they've got some marquee players um, we know the style they play we'll have to kind of do a lot of work but look we're, we're looking forward to it like, like it's brilliant in a way that I mean there was a lot of hype about us recently now that hype will probably be tampered a little bit and we'll probably go in as underdogs which suits us better like we know you know we're not as high as people think and we're not as low as some people think we're somewhere in the middle and it's trying trying to get that um, consistency and look we look forward to it and I, I think it'll be a good game of football. Oh, good stuff thank you. Cheers,